Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. We've just released version 1.4 of the Drone Pilot Canada app. It's got some great new features in it that will make it even easier for you to meet the requirements of the 2019 Canadian RPAS regulations and to fly your drone safely. Let's run through them right now. The first new feature is an expansion of the document storage capability we introduced in version 1.3. Now, the app allows you to store any PDF files you wish, not just certificates and exam results. Like before, you start by accessing an email with one or more PDFs as attachment. So, suppose I want to upload a list of the new drone regulations, like this. Select the Drone Canada app just once. And on the iOS version, you'd, you'd select your uh, application in much the same way. Typically, you have to slide around on the list to, see, to find the correct app you want to uh, open with. But open the document with Drone Pilot Canada. Now you're offered some options. If you wish to upload a, an aircraft registration document, a pilot certificate, or pilot exam results, you simply pick the item from this list. And as you add other types of documents, you can select them directly from this list as well. Anything you select from the list will be refreshed with your new PDF contents. If you want to add a new type of document, you click Add New PDF Document at the bottom. You give the document a title, say 901 Rules. The next step is to choose a category. Adding a crew document will associate the document with a particular crew member, and you'll be asked which crew member to add it to. This would be great for insurance documents or perhaps a picture of your crew member, anything you like as long as it's a PDF. Adding an aircraft document will associate the document with an individual aircraft. A number of people have mentioned wanting to store maintenance documents in addition to the instruction manual for their drone. This way you can do that. Finally, you can select Add General Document for, well, general documents, like my list of 901 regulations, for example. I'll click that, and we're done. Within Drone Pilot Canada, you can access the pilot and aircraft documents on their respective screens. The general documents are available on the hamburger menu under Documents. Here you can see your downloaded instruction manuals as well as our general PDF documents. And there's our 901 document right there. If you want to delete a document, just do a long press on Android and then select OK. And to do the same sort of thing on an Apple device, you swipe to the left and hit delete. This general document feature opens up a lot of flexibility. You could store your own checklist this way or important phone numbers or, well, really anything you want as long as it's a PDF document. The sky's the limit for storing documents in the app. Well, okay, your phone's memory is the limit for storing documents in the app. Uh, but my point is that you now have full flexibility to store any kind of PDF in the app and keep it all in one nice place and update them in a, as often as you want. The next three Drone Pilot Canada features are all additions to the main map screen. The first one is showing your elevation in feet above sea level. Anytime you click on the map, your approximate elevation is displayed. This is a handy feature for planning your flights, and it also it's just kind of cool. The numbers are designed not to overlap, so you, you won't get too much clutter, and if you hit the clear last location, it simply clears them all away. And before someone complains about Canada being metric, why is the elevation in feet? I didn't want confusion when comparing this elevation that you see in the app to what you might see on aviation charts all of which are in feet and miles and all that non-metric stuff. 
Speaking of aviation charts, we've provided direct access to a VFR sectional map view of your current area, courtesy of a great website called SkyVector. Just click on the SkyVector button and it will show you the VFR sectional map view centered on the same spot as you had in Drone Pilot Canada. You can zoom around and you can access all of the features that SkyVector has to offer. But wait, there's more. If you click on an aerodrome, as usual, it brings up a little banner that explains the basics about that aerodrome, the identifier, in this case CEM2, and the operator information and contact information. In Drone Pilot Canada 1.4, if you click on that banner, it will instantly take you, assuming you have an internet connection, to the Sky Vector airport information for that aerodrome. All the information that you could possibly need about that aerodrome. Sky Vector is an excellent resource and a wonderful companion to Drone Pilot Canada. The next map addition we've made is a map view of the Flight Information Regions, or FIRs. When submitting a Nav Canada RPAS flight authorization request, which you need to do when flying in controlled airspace, you need to know which FIR you're going to be flying in. And this feature is a simple way to determine exactly that. Just touch Show FIR, and you can tell immediately which FIR you, you are currently in or where your planned flight is. In my case, I'm in the Toronto FIR. And when you're done, you click the Hide FIR and you can zoom back in if you wish. The final feature added in version 1.4 is better support for those using Android tablets. Drone Pilot Canada now supports both landscape and portrait use of tablets. You can rotate your tablet on the map screen, then all the menus and screens will appear in that orientation. I know this probably sounds trivial, but Android makes it very difficult for app developers to support screen rotation, especially in an app like ours. Our iOS version fully supports iPad rotation already. Well, there you have it. Release 1.4 of Drone Pilot Canada. We're continuing to add new features to the app, so if you have any new ideas or, heaven forbid, you have a problem, don't hesitate to drop me a line at dondroneson at gmail.com. Thanks again for your support.